Hi, I'm Piotr Zarowicz, and I'm responsible for developing partnerships at Arcturus. Today, I'm sharing how to create digital humans with volumetric video. And the easiest place to start is by introducing my digital double. We're at Mobile Motion MoCap Studios in Los Angeles, and this is a TEDV capture system. TEDV differs from other capture systems by not requiring a green screen. That's Guy over there working the controls, making that digital copy of me. During this presentation, you'll learn how volumetric video enables creators to forge human connections when physically being in the same space is not feasible. Volumetric video is still in its early days. We have seen some interesting projects develop and launch over the last two years. Initiatives taken by entertainment companies, sports teams, and advertising have recognized that digital humans can be a stand-in for in-person events, creating memorable experiences for any audience. By experimenting early, companies are deciphering how best to utilize digital humans in preparation for an AR-driven world and other various advantages that 5G may offer. So let's take a closer look at how we create a digital human in volumetric video. I started this presentation by showing you a TEDV capture system. For a cleaner reveal of the steps involved with volumetric video, let's take a look at this pretty descriptive slide from Microsoft Mixed Reality. From left to right, you can see how 53 RGB and 53 IR cameras initially capture the performance before it's distilled into a point cloud and then mesh with textures before it's finally output as an MP4. While these are Microsoft steps, other capture systems vary these steps in how they accomplish their finished product. This is a Microsoft Mixed Reality Capture Studio run by Metastage in Los Angeles. The stage itself is 30 feet in diameter and 20 feet high. Their ideal capture volume is 8 feet in diameter. There are 16 RE sky panels for even lighting or practical, meaning theatrical, dramatic, or scene-specific lighting effects. Once captured, they do the processing working with Microsoft's reconstruction software, ultimately outputting a usable MP4 file. These digital humans can then be imported into game engines like Unity or Unreal. Metastage has been active for a few years now and recently has been creating them for the Jadu app. Jadu's mission is to allow fans to perform alongside holograms of their favorite musicians and performers. It's a particularly powerful tool. Fans feel like they're getting private performances and the stars are connecting with fans when concerts and events are not possible. Creating these human connections when physically being in that same space is not feasible is one of the most exciting aspects of volumetric video. It is a feature that only volumetric digital humans can offer. While the example you're looking at now is over two years old, the emotional impact it delivers is eternal. This project for Santander Bank showed how powerful an experience with a digital human can be. It was meant to illustrate the struggles of the working homeless. And when she turns her head to face the viewer directly and asks for your help, it hits you in the feels. That instant connection to another human being in their time of need beautifully illustrates the power digital humans can wield. Moving to lighter and more entertaining fare, Korean boy band BTS helped launch a new Samsung phone this summer by including digital versions of themselves. The social excitement was palpable as fans interacted, air kissed, and hung out with the boys. Taking this concept one step further, let's take a look at digital humans reacting in real time to their viewer. This very simple example of the game Rock, Paper, Scissors shows how we can loop sequences of volumetric video that seamlessly blend with the selection a viewer makes. While this example is based on a click, it's possible to do the same with a voice command, tie in some machine learned or AI database of content and meaningful conversations can take place with digital humans. 
Rock. Imagine a hologram concierge or nurse. People always pick rock. Okay, we're gonna go on three. So how do we edit rock. digital humans? Most of us are familiar with traditional video production pipelines. So this video of Adobe Premiere should be recognizable. It's very linear. Drop clips on a timeline, export pieces out for effects, merge them back in when complete, ultimately giving you an EDL you can publish. A volumetric video pipeline maintains some similarity, but adds important and necessary 3D animation tools. This is HollowEdit, a post-production pipeline built specifically for volumetric video. It is designed to help address the most commonly faced issues, like fixing mesh, cleaning textures, and compression of that data. HollowEdit plugins make working with third-party software like Maya a breeze, correcting single keyframes that are then re-imported to HollowEdit and applied across an entire sequence, saving days of time and effort of fixing things frame by frame. Generating skeletons allows creators to manipulate and change physical performance in post-production. These skeletonization tools allow creators to modify and adjust physical performances and bake those changes into a final product. This skeleton can also be used for real-time head and limb retargeting. Digital humans can turn, look, and even shake your hand. Eventually, creators export these volumetric files to game engines like Unity, seen here, for eventual use in any number and type of project. And lastly, but perhaps most importantly, I want to touch on the distribution of digital humans. As with any medium, distribution is critical. You can create the most amazing experiences, but without a way to get it to your audience, no one will know. Because volumetric can be utilized in game engines and WebGL, it can be made ready for a lot of devices, including the two billion smartphones around the globe. AR distributors like Eighth Wall have done a great job in breaking down barriers for big brands to explore augmented reality with digital humans. A recent example is Burger King's Whoppa on a Whopper. The miniature concert, produced in collaboration with Dimension Studios, is believed to be the smallest gig ever. Stephen DeWolf, who is the chief creative officer at BBH, an ad agency in London, said, in a world with no live music, we wanted to give everyone the opportunity to experience an exclusive gig from one of the UK's biggest rap artists. <laughs> this activation definitely made me smile. So, how else can digital humans be distributed? Delivering short downloadable sequences of volumetric video is something most, if not all, of the capture systems offer. But only Holostream provides adaptive streaming. Arcturus has pioneered a streaming solution for moving three-dimensional imagery that makes it simple to add streaming volumetric video to any application. It leverages the same core streaming infrastructure that the streaming giants like Netflix or Amazon Video use to deliver high-quality video streaming that adapts to your available bandwidth. Holostream determines and delivers the highest quality stream that a user is able to view, then keeps analyzing and feeding the best quality footage for their internet connection and device capabilities. It further capitalizes on CDNs with instantaneous global reach. Holostream has no limits for the digital humans it can stream to any device. And because it streams polygons versus a 2D image, it maintains six off capabilities, allowing digital humans to react and respond to their viewers in real time. We're just beginning to discover all the use cases for digital humans, but at the very least we have robust methods to build and deliver them. And with that, I'd like to thank VR Days for the opportunity to present. Thank you for your time. I hope you learned a little bit about creating digital humans with volumetric video. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Feel free to hit me up on socials or email. All my details are on screen now.